with us right now, we have Derek, Derek Pham, uh, who has kindly agreed to come and do a workshop for us today. So just to introduce Derek, Derek graduated from Georgetown University in international politics. Uh, he went to Harvard University at JFK School of Government, did a Master of Public Policy there. Super exciting. And I don't know why he went into consulting. So he went and joined Deloitte, became a consultant, a bit for strategy and operations, so still pretty cool. And after being at Deloitte, he decided to join 500 Global, which is one of the world's most active venture capital fund. Today at 500 Global, Derek is the director of corporate growth. He leads the development of new corporate innovation services and products. Uh, he recently spent, what was it, three months in Korea working with LGU Plus, which is one of the leading telecommunications company in Korea and really trying to transform them and help them and teach them how to create startups itself. So with that, I thought he was, you know, there was no one else better than Derek to come and guide everyone on how to discover your customers and validate the market. Uh, Derek is also a mentor at an education accelerator at New Space and is also mentoring a platform called Kinobi, which basically provides, I think, mentorship and career acceleration to Gen Zs. So without further ado, can we all... Thank Derek for being here. However you want to thank him, do a reaction, write in the chat, whatever it is that you want to do, it would be great. And since I have all of your cameras on, uh, some of you guys have like very swiftly turned it off. I'm just going to ask if we can very quickly take a screenshot first. So guys, please turn on your cameras. Okay, just hang on there. Uh, I can also take yes. it. Okay, okay, turn on. Um, Kenzie, if you can just like lift your head a little bit higher so I can see something beyond your earphones. Kellen, I'm seeing a really, really nice cool Zoom background, but do you, do you want to show your face, Kellen? Are you there? <laughs> Are we not there? <laughs> okay, it's okay. Okay, smile everyone. I'm just going to take a couple of shots. And hang on, uh, second team. Okay, Karim, got that water down. Okay, smile. And last one, smile, 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 guys. Cadence, okay, okay, Kasmia, great. Um, okay, Danielle, Rachel, Rayan, Thames, Parmida, Charlie, if you guys wanna turn on your camera, now would be great. One, two, three, smile. Okay, with that, thank you. I am going to hand it over to Derek. Awesome, thanks, Elaine. Hi, everyone. Good evening. I know it's late, uh, well, relatively speaking for you all. So thank you for taking the time to jump on today. I'm excited to spend the next hour with all of you. Um, Elaine, just remind me, I have 2.15 to stop or, three, or my time 2.15, but yeah yeah got it okay thank you so um we're gonna spend the next hour um talking about validation of customer needs through experiments um so Elaine shared with me that right now and i've had a chance to see some of your pitch decks which uh very impressive work uh for sure and so you know some of them are very top-notch quality and rivals a lot of our startups themselves so there's really a future in, for that in all of you um but the, this particular session is gonna take a look at sort of understanding, okay, now that you have your customer or you, your hypothetical customer, how do you actually sort of quantify that they are a large enough uh, commercializable segment uh, that they you can actually grow a business around, right? Um, and so we're gonna look at experimentation tactics, specifically what types of experiments you might be able to run. And we're also going to look in the second half of the session at uh, different type, uh, like a, just, just documenting these experiments and making sure that you're able to act upon them the moment you leave the session. So we'll do two short breakouts as well in each one. Um, there's a lot to cover, so why don't we dive right in? So let's start with an activity. Yes, I was a former teacher as well too, so um, Ewing and I always do these activities. So there's gonna be lots of little activities along the way. So I'm gonna ask, um, everyone here to take a look at these categories of questions in front of you right now. There's just one, two, three, four. So there's like these different categories. Tell me in the chat 
um, which one of these categories of questions you're most, you're currently wrestling with right now, currently trying to figure out. So let's take about a quick minute to just review the questions um, and then go ahead and put that in the chat. So from Bailey at EcoGo, three and four. Candy Shell, four. Ian from EcoGo is also four. 1.5, interesting, okay. <laughs> All right, creating new categories. Um, we have three, okay, so three and four. And while you guys are putting that in, I'll just sort of read these over, right? So the first category is about who's the customer uh, and what is their needs. The second category is, is the existing potential product or, or solution that's on the market able to actually solve that need? The third is, are they willing to pay for it? Or are there, is there interest in a potential new product or the existing product that they would actually convert? And the last one is that the existing product, is it actually meeting the need well enough, right? So, all right, let me take a look at our survey. All right, three to four, and I've gotten 14 or so responses. So let's take another 10 seconds. If you haven't yet uh, filled out, a potential answer to, oh, our first two, upstart. Great. Okay. So let's jump um, and we'll revisit that in a quick moment. But again, just to reiterate the objectives for today's workshop. So next slide, we're really focused on identifying different experimental questions or methods that are gonna help us answer questions about our customer and our product. So right now from my understanding, you have your customer, you have a product concept, maybe a built product, uh, and you wanna have certain, you have certain hypotheses or assumptions about that customer and that product that you've attached to, uh, that you want to be able to answer through experimentation. And then the second piece is being able to actually do the formal documentation of that, being able to capture what is it that you're working towards in an experiment so that everyone on your team is aligned and that you're able to actually then say, okay, Given the outcomes of this experiment, we're now able to choose this path or a different path forward. Uh, all right, so let's jump in. Let's go back into review the output of the activity. So there's a very basic framework that we use, uh, 500 Global, to help us think about our experimentation approach. And so when you were choosing between categories one through four, really, it's broken down largely uh, into these two dimensions of market and product and generative and evaluative. So broadly speaking, market is referring to our customer and product is, as the name suggests, our product or our solution. It could be a built product or maybe it's just right now currently prototype product, even a prototype, which is essentially a concept that hasn't been built out. Um, or it could be even a launch product that you're trying to refine, right? And then the generative and the evaluative is really about uh, looking at questions where are you trying to generate new opportunities with, so that's, are, are you trying to identify new opportunity spaces that's generative or are you reacting to something that's existing, which is evaluative. And so we're gonna go actually for today, really look at that second uh, row, the evaluative uh, market and product experiments. So on the next slide, basically what it tells us is that you're really, um, when you look at market generative, the questions that you're trying to answer here is that you're unclear about your customer profile. So who are they, what do they want? I think for the most of us, uh, that's been pretty much set or answered, I think. Uh, but correct me if I'm wrong, we can certainly have that discussion in today's session. Product generative is when you're unclear about which product features actually lead to a solution that people would buy. And this is really demarcated by the notion of the minimum viable product, right? So when you're still generating ideas about what the potential product could be, you're trying to actually test those specific features that become part of your minimum viable product, which is the first product that a customer is willing to buy, even if it's imperfect, right? And then the market evaluatives, right, is when you have a clear cut hypothesis of who your customer is, but you're really struggling about what will they pay or will they be willing to pay? So this is the first time when you actually have a clear product or sorry, a customer uh, that you, you've identified that now you need to put something in front of them and you're just testing whether or not they would actually convert. 
And then the product evaluative is that you actually are able to um, have a clear hypothesis on like what will be the specific features that will solve the customer's problem. So you want to test specific aspects of the product. You have the core product down, but you're looking for certain aspects of the product to test further. Uh, the slides disappeared for me. Got it. Thanks, Yiling. <laughs> okay. Um, so today, what we're going to do, as I mentioned earlier, is we're going to go to really the evaluative tests. Um, and so next slide kind of presents a lot of different test names. Um, in this case, we're not going to go through each one. That would take forever. And uh, we're going to go just through a few examples that we think could be easily actually set up in the next few days, if you really think hard about it, right? Um, I'll also be leaving you with a reference that this really comes from. It's a very comprehensive document um, that sort of goes through each of these and tells you when these tests are good for. So you can also use that as a reference document. We'll share that um, with you after the workshop. But just looking at this right now, uh, when we talk about validation for this workshop, I just want to be clear that we're, we're assuming that you have all spoken to your target customers about their challenges. You have identified a potential profile or persona, right, that you believe is actually a big enough opportunity to market to and convert and therefore build a high growth business around. Um, and so we're, we're going off of the baseline that you have a potential product and you have a customer, therefore we're looking at evaluative uh, experiments. All right. So let's jump into the experimental evaluative methods. And we're gonna look at five today. Um, and those five are the comprehension test, the fake door test, the high bar test, the broken promise test, and the pre sales test. So I'd like you to take a moment and go ahead and again in the chat, just type out uh, from a scale of one through five, one being I'm completely unfamiliar with all of these and five being I'm actually very familiar with all of these. What is your sort of understanding of these type, different types of tests? Have you heard of them? Are you or are you have you heard of some of them? Have you heard of none of them? Go ahead and put that in the chat right now. One, 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 two, one, zero. Okay, great. So I'm gonna create value add today in this session by sending new information home with everyone. Excellent. Okay, so I'm sure that you're curious because as founders of your startup ventures, you're trying to understand how can I actually do validation, right? And at the core, validation is basically being able to say, the hypothesis that I have to bring to market is true. And the more of these hypotheses that I have that I can validate, that I can deem correct, the more likely I'm going to have a product that will achieve what we call product market fit. There is a product that satisfies enough demand from your customers for you to grow very rapidly. That's product market fit, right? So we're going to jump into each one of these really quickly. And um, if you want to take some notes on this, I would recommend because I didn't put a lot of text here. So I'm going to talk through some of these at a high level. And then um, we'll, we can always send this deck around as a reference with the notes as well for you, if you need. So basically, um, we'll send you the slides, but you wouldn't have every gem that Derek is sharing. So yeah, if you want to take notes, take notes. Yes, and you'll also need it for the activity after this. So you might want to just quickly jot down a few things, OK? So the first, each, each experiment, I'm just going to tell you at a high level, what is it? What is it trying to test for? And then Ideally, you should think about how that might relate to you if you still need to run that type of test because it could be very applicable, right? Um, so <clears throat> let's start with a comprehension test. So the comprehension test really basically answers what you see on the slide. Do customers understand my product and not want it? Or do they understand my pro, sorry. Do, they, do customers understand my product and not want it? Or do they understand my, did I write the same? Okay. I think I wrote, the, I wrote the same question. Do customers, so so comprehension test should actually be, do customers understand my product and uh, want it or do they, under, do they not understand my product and not want it? So what we're trying to test here is because most founders 
they think that if you present a idea in front of a customer and they say, mm, I don't want it, it's not because they don't want it. It's because they don't understand what the product is. The problem is that you have, some of you have very complicated ideas that it takes a really hard time to explain to a customer. So if you're spending a lot of time trying to explain what the solution is and you're not making it simple enough, the customer may be just overwhelmed and confused and so therefore say they don't want it. But in reality, if you are able to simplify the actual value proposition, then they might want it, right? So we're, we're trying to test for that, to make sure that it's not because they don't want it because they don't understand it, but it's because uh, they, they it, it's not because they don't want it because they don't understand it. There's a lot of double negatives here, I, I apologize. Um, so how do you do this? So basically a comprehension test is really simple. You take out a note card, an index card of some sort, you write down your value proposition for your product or your service. So remember the value product value proposition is a statement of benefits, not features, right? So it is about helping your customer achieve something. It's not about the great little bits and pieces about your product. That's the difference between benefits and features. So when you write down in a very short index card size uh, uh, piece of paper, you're gonna write down what your product or service is. Then you're gonna go up to each of your potential customers and you're gonna show them the card. The, you're gonna give them about 10 seconds. They usually do five, but in this case, you can also give them 10. 10 seconds to read the card and then recite back to you what they understand the value proposition of your business is. So let me just pause there and just let it sink in for a second because I, I, I know that I'm saying a lot. Um, the goal here is that you want to be able to have the customer as accurately as possible explain to you the benefit of your product. If they are, if their explanation is about comparable, then you count that as a positive result for that experiment. So if you go up to 30 different customers and you present to them your index card and you ask them, could you take 10 seconds to read this? And then tell me, what do you think is the, what is the benefit of this product? And, uh, you know, 25 of them of the 30 are able to be very close to the result, then you've done very well, right? Usually this is a benchmark. You want about 80% of your sample size to be able to positively respond and accurately respond to the question, what is my value proposition, right? The goal is that you want this to be very high because people should understand your value proposition. If they don't understand it, then your value proposition is too complicated to go to market with and you need to change it and it's positioning. Okay. Are there any questions on the comprehension test? feel free to type it in the chat or just go ahead and ask me directly. And then we'll move on to the next one. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna to move to the next one, which is the fake door test. Um, so in the fake door test, and the reason why this is called a fake door test, um, it originated, I mean, in software, uh, it, Facebook was like a good example of this. The idea of this test is you build like a fake advertisement or button on a website or, for, you know, just to see if people will click on it. Uh, and then ultimately the fake door is that when they click on it, there's an error message that says, oh, this is actually coming soon or sorry, this is an error. You've reached this in error. We apologize, da, da, da. The, the point of the fake door test is just to see whether or not the messaging, the positioning of your product features, something of that sort, will spark enough interest from your customer to see if this is a welcome addition to your product. And this is a very fast way to validate aspects of your product without a lot of time and money on development, right? Uh, for example, if you're trying to create, just generate buzz and interest in say signups for a, a new release for a product, let's say that your hypothesis is that if you add something to your existing product, it's a new release that you're gonna get X percent people signing up. You can make a fake door test, right? You just basically have people sign up. You have their information down that shows that they've been interested enough to get acquired, right? Which is the act of literally putting in their email, but they're not gonna get something in return. It's just gonna say, oh, we're so we apologize. We're still working on this. Uh, we will give you an update the moment this product launches, right? So you're testing for a commitment from the customer to move forward beyond just casual, 
awareness uh, of your product. They, they actually want to sign up for it or they find something interesting about it. Um, this is also a tricky test. You don't want to do this too often because customers will see like, oh, we're, you're, either your product's too broken or you're tricking us. And if you're doing too many fake door tests, especially those of you who have like landing pages or websites set up already, or you have some sort of mobile application, then they're going to find that the product is maybe suboptimal and turn away. So just carefully think about using when to use the fake door test. Okay. All right, next two tests, high bar test and broken promise test. So the high bar test is testing whether or not your customer is willing to do whatever it takes to buy your product or service. And the high bar test is a funny, is a fun one because this, this particular test is really testing your customer's motivation, right? So they have to go through an abnormal amount of friction to be able to pay you or to sign up. Usually it's usually like a sign up, okay? So if, for example, you had a product that you could do pre-qualification, like mostly like an insurance product, right? If, you know, a normal insurance process takes only five steps for a product, for a customer to be, uh, uh, to be pre-qualified, you can do 10 steps. And if their customer is willing to go through all 10 steps to get to the end, then there's something very attractive about your value proposition or your product, right? So again, this test has to be connected to a specific hypothesis. So it could be a hypothesis about your value proposition. It could be a hypothesis about the specific type of customer you're trying to target or a feature that you're introducing to your product, right? But the goal is that if you can set up really abnormally like high different hurdles and steps along the way, then, and they sign up and they ultimately convert, um, or meaning, sorry, get acquired, then that's a good, that's a good sign. Um, so think about different ways to introduce hurdles into your experiment. You could have, for example, extra form fields that you could put in for a sign up. You could have, if you're doing like a B2B business where you have to pitch to, to, uh, customers, then if you gave them, you made them take additional meetings with you. So instead of like one or two meetings, they have to take like five qualifying meetings, right? Uh, then, and they do it, <laughs> then they must be really, really uh, pain. They must be in a, a lot of pain and they really want you to solve their problem for them, right? Um, and this is, a very, this is a very useful technique if you're in a B2B environment, so you're selling to other businesses, where in reality, remember, you've already probably gotten a lot of customers signing up and they're through like your email lists, right? Um, but now the goal is you try to get those people who are on your email list to translate them into sales. So if you already have gotten a lot of customer data from your customer discovery, where they, they signed up like initially with just a very quick email, now you go back to them and introduce your product, your value proposition, but you're moving them from acquisition to like the sale. And if you have to give three different steps along the way, and they still take three steps to go with you along that whole way, uh, then they're going to be a converted customer and they'll buy, right? And that's a good way to sort of improve your conversion rate. One pitfall of the high bar test is that uh, you don't know what is the threshold for passing sometimes, right? So your team has to be very clear about what is a high bar. So for example, if the high bar is that the customer needs to go through three of the five steps. And let's say 80% of your customers only go through two of the five steps. Does that actually mean that the high bar test failed, right? Because remember the high bar test is already abnormally high threshold. So actually you might have to calibrate your experiment a little bit so that in reality, what is really a high bar is the two of the five steps as opposed to three of the five steps. So if they get to one of the five steps, that's already progress, right? That's where the iteration will come in. Okay. Any questions so far? Feel free to drop it in the chat. Okay, last two and I'll uh, speed up a little bit. The broken promise test, okay? So the broken promise test helps you design around the most important features for your product. And so the broken promise test is essentially a test of virality. How viral of an idea is your test? 
And so you're not measure, or sorry, is your product. You're not measuring conversion here. You're not measuring how many people will click through or buy something. You're measuring referrals. So the broken promise test is a pretty easy way to set up as well too. Um, in the same way, you're going to have like a web page or you might have an email list and you send it to your customers and say, you know, we're, we're launching this new product uh, and you've already signed up. We want to, you're an exclusive club. Um, we don't want you to share this with anyone. This promo code is just for you, right? And through some very simple technology tracking, because each promo code has an associated link, or each link has for the promo code has associated tracking ID, you should be able to see whether or not someone actually forwards that promo to someone else, right? And so the goal here is that they broke their promise that they're not going to forward it, but in reality that you want them to forward it because by saying that, please do not share this with anyone else, but they do, you're actually testing again, uh, their, their, their perception of the growth or the promise, the virality of your product. Okay. And then the very last test that we'll go through is the pre-sales test. So the pre-sales test is pretty straightforward as well too. The pre-sales is actually really, is like if of all these tests right here is probably the most uh, indicative that you have validated the customer pain or the customer themselves. Because in a pre-sales test, customers are actually paying you before they have received any part of the product or the value. So this could come in the form of, you know, a letter of intent, a purchase order, uh, this could come in the form of a crowdfunding campaign. Those are usually a pre-sales test. If you launch your, uh, your product on say Kickstarter and you get a bunch of people just pouring money into it and you exceed your target, then you definitely have landed upon a viable product, right? That might be moving towards product market fit. So in this case, when you think of pre-sales, you want to think about how can you create a, a kind of buzz and campaign that people will actually be willing to pay you prior to even uh, launching the product. The only downside to this is that you actually have to deliver the product. So don't, otherwise your reputation is shattered if you don't actually deliver in your product. So only do this if you're pretty confident you will launch a product, but you wanna just test the market interest in the positioning of that product. Okay. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and do our first activity slash breakout. In this case, um, next, if, uh, next slide. What you're gonna do is you're going to choose one of these five to apply to your own business. Um, so first you need to have the core question that you want to validate about your solutions. So remember those four categories that we had at the very beginning? One was about who's my customer, uh, what's the product, but remember the evaluative one is about, are they willing to pay? Or the second one is what is the, what types of features can I add that I can uh, most likely add, a, launch a, a viable product to the customer, right? So there's certain questions that we had at the beginning. So choose one and then think about one of these tests as ability to validate those questions. So how might you say run a fake door test? I think I saw one like for, I think it was it adapt a weather. Yes, umbrella stations around Hong Kong. How, how could we do a pre-sales test or a high bar test, right? Uh, specifically around validating payment of this service. So think about it in that very concrete way and then share your ideas in your breakout room for feedback, okay? So we're gonna do, how many are in a breakout, Yiling? Uh, they'll be in their own teams. Oh, okay, okay, great. So yeah. you're actually in your own teams, Never mind. So yeah. you can talk about it in your own teams and then we'll come back and we'll have two or three of you to just kind of share so that we sort of round out this section of the workshop. How long should we do this? We'll do it for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. Yeah. Okay, so for some of you, you would have been automatically moved, um, but for the rest of you, who signed in during, using a different email, we can't. So can you see the breakout room similar to last week? You can just go and look for your own room and join. Are you able to see that? Do you see like a, a breakout where you yeah. can jump around? Okay. Uh, 
for the rest of you who are still here, let me know if you have any issues I'll assign you as well. So yeah, maybe we come back at, uh, what is that, 8.01 or something or 8.03? Okay, yep, and I, then I set it for 10. Mm. And then I only have actually 12 minutes, right? So, <laughs> no, so the hot uh, stop is uh, until the 30 minute mark. Oh, 30 minutes, oh, okay, yeah. okay. For some reason, I thought minutes. since we were starting at 1.15 or my time, 15, I wasn't. Okay, there. yeah. Okay. So do I have that up until that time or do you want me yeah. to stop sharing? Yeah, no, you have to end here yeah, up until that time. So 2.30. Okay, okay, cool. So that we have actually time for them to do the other half of the session. <sighs> yeah, I think it'd be important to let them try thinking about it and then you can speak through it a little bit faster maybe. Actually, let me share with them the questions, right? Yeah, it's the first, uh, cool, right? Next, next one. Or previous previous question, previous this one? previous no this one this one hmm? yeah this yeah one? that one yeah yeah okay honey. am I speaking too fast or too slow I think I can go a bit faster. Okay, I'm so used to speaking to Koreans and Japanese now. I'm like, it's just, I forget they're Singaporean. <laughs> so, uh... Okay. Let's, welcome back. Um, so let's actually do some sharing because it would be helpful to kind of hear from each of the teams. So actually, before we do individual teams, why don't we do this in the chat, just identify your company and then name the, it can be everyone, it doesn't have to be just one person, uh, name the core hypothesis that you wanted to test. So go ahead and take a moment to type that into the chat right now, as in your discussion, what was like the core thing that you might want to test and then we'll talk about which one of these might have been a potential experimental method for that. So did do do we all discuss one thing we wanted to test in this 10 minute breakout or did we this Okay so EcoGo says do users want to find out about eco-friendly stores near their area Okay so they're testing would users want to uh ident you know if there was so I guess the implicit hypothesis is if there is an eco-friendly store near their area, these users will use them. Uh, it's, it's because they can't find them otherwise, okay? Do our users feel like features help them with managing their own finance? Okay, so that's spend wise. Um, get me out of here from comprehension test. Can you write out your core hypothesis, Yao Jie? Okay, Upstart Tokyo. Is our target demographic interested enough in our concept to begin to download our app? Okay, that's an interesting one too. So you're looking at conversion. <clears throat> um, I'm sorry, yeah, acquisition. So signing up for the, the app and downloading it. Seek says, do people want to use an application to do donate, receive products? Okay, so there's still a little bit of generative discovery there, right? So trying to figure out is, is the actual product that will do donation and receiving of products is, a, is, is an application. Great, keep them coming. Okay, so as you, you need to have like a core hypothesis in order to do this. You should not jump into a test without an actual core hypothesis. We'll, we'll reiterate that in, the, in this coming session, this coming section of the talk today. But just 
remember that it should start with some sort of question that you have. And Eling shared with you the categories of questions that we started off with today's uh, session that you can bucket them largely into generative or evaluative questions, right? So the evaluative questions, which is what the focus of this session is, is really focused on evaluating your products and your customer's willingness to pay for that product and other features that you might be exploring for that product to create value for your customer. Then once you have your core hypothesis of whatever it is that you're trying to evaluate, then you can actually decide which one of these tests is a method of testing for that hypothesis, okay? So next is, could you then share with everyone in the chat, um, again, put your name of your company down, what is the test that you would use to test your hypothesis? And it's not just, don't just write out pre-sales tests, actually say like what we would like to do in order to test that hypothesis for pre-sales. So like pre-sales is like, we would like to set up a landing page or a sign-up sheet uh, that, or a crowdfunding campaign that would allow us to gather uh, payments before the launch or something like that, right? So go ahead and take a moment to write out what the actual potential test you might apply for your hypothesis is. And let's see what everyone got. And then I'm gonna ask Eling to, to find an interesting one to, to have us kick off a group discussion. Once we get some potential tests, Spendwise has a fake door test. So we will include a demo feature on our website and track the number of clicks on the feature page. Presumably they can't get past, uh, the, the, these are like fake features, right? They, they're not, they're not, uh, they're not yet actually launched. It's just people interested in, in a potential feature. Okay, we have another fake door test from EcoGo. We have a comprehension test from Get Me Out of Here. Show them a Figma, Adobe, okay. Prototype and see if they understand our product easily, possibly by observing their behavior in interacting with the prototype. Okay, that's, that's, that's a fair one. Good. Hemisphere, high bar test. We have a very long online survey, that's right, <laughs> to measure the extent of inconvenience our customers are willing to go through to gain access to our product, okay? So that is the definition of a high bar test. We'll get into the details in a bit. And as you're looking at some of these responses from your peers, just think about, you know, is everyone understanding the high bar test, the fake door test, any of these tests in the same way that you are? because uh, if there's another way of looking at it, it could be also helpful for you to think about them, right? These are just categories of tests, but ultimately at the end of the day, the test is a medium to figure out and answer a hypothesis. Okay, let's do another 30 seconds. In the meantime, I'm gonna wait, Yiling's gonna let us know which of these groups would she think like to, would she like to call on to sort of present their discussion from the breakout? We're gonna do maybe two groups before we move on to the next session. Okay, let's try the broken promise test by Seek. And no, Spendwise, sorry. By Spendwise, Spendwise, broken promise test. Okay, so that looks like Sanya, right? Or someone from that team as well. But Sanya, since you wrote it, the I'm gonna read it out. It's send a promo code to allow access to some features and evaluate their satisfaction. Do they like these features? Do we need to change anything? Can you talk us through the core hypothesis again, and then why this particular test? Someone from Spendwise or Sanya, since you you submitted that. Uh, I think I can speak. Uh, so for our broken promise test, uh, our core hypothesis is we want to find out whether our customers really feel like these features are uh, helping them um, or well, is their product is supposed to be helping people um, increase their young people increase their financial literacy so um, we aim to have uh, certain features that are locked 
on our website and um, give access to certain individual users um, and evaluate uh, their use of the features and whether they send it or send these promo codes to other people. And so then we can understand their satisfaction uh, of the features and also virality and whether they want to share it with other people and they feel other people benefit as well. Thank you for sharing. Going first is, I know is uh, always the pr courageous first step, but uh, yes, you hit on everything that is about the broken promise test. Remember the broken promise test is measuring virality, just like, is it Canon? Canon, is that the name? Yeah. Awesome, okay. Uh, so as Kanan mentioned, broken promise test is about virality and referral. So the goal here is tracking the number of referrals that you get. So you wanna have some way to track the referrals. So if you are doing a, a voucher system um, that's like, like printed out and handing it to people, it's gonna be hard to track that, right? But so you, you might need to more of a digital test there. And there's ways to do that, obviously, if uh, you have the technical talent on the team. Um, but the goal is not about necessarily signing up or a, like a conversion. When we say a sign up, it's, is an acquisition or a conversion is when someone pays for it. Um, we're talking about referral, which is people may have not, may have already signed up and they just wanna like tell everyone else that they are already part of this very exclusive product service or, or feature group, right? So that's what we wanna try to look for in this type of test. So thank you for that. Okay, Eileen, how about one more and then we'll, we'll round it up. Okay, let's try um, Upstart. Upstart. It include QR codes on marketing materials in college campuses and tracking total scans. Mm, great, okay. It's a fake door test. So Lee or someone from that team, can you give us some light onto your core hypothesis and why this test? Yeah, so we just wanted to uh, basically our, our main question right now is not even, it's just a matter of whether people are interested in kind of the general concept and what we're selling enough to take action on it. Um, I think we're not really at the stage where like signing up is even like part of it. So what, how we would do that is um, include a QR code on like marketing materials, like flyers and, and posters and maybe like social media, like advertisements and see how many people actually take the time to go learn more and then we we would know that by tracking um yeah how many how many times that link has been visited mm. great derek i'm awesome. just wondering for you've seen some of their pictures right for most of the mm. teams here is there actually a suggestion as to which test is the most appropriate to run at such an early stage so all of these tests can actually be run at an early stage it's going to depend on a combination of a few factors one is time and resourcing. If you if you if you need to run a test where the data is going to take you three weeks, five weeks to get back, it's not a very useful test, right? So any of these tests ideally could be run within the week or a few days, assuming that you set it up correctly. Second is the effort, right, uh, of the technical piece to it. Like, is, is this going to be highly technical? A comprehension test is a very simple, like paper index card that everyone could do here and everyone should do. Like you should all test to make sure that people understand your value proposition so that that's the first step before they go ahead and say like, I want that value proposition. Um, but then there's other tools that we could have that are software tools that you could use and which we'll share with you after this as well too, that you could potentially use to help facilitate that process. Um, so it's a, it's a variety. Um, the reference document that I'll share with you actually has a breakdown by test uh, as to the number of days or hours, uh, what's gonna be needed. And if your team is already primed for that, you have the enough technical expertise, but also uh, the time, you should be able to do that. Um, uh, so it really just depends. Um, but these are all evaluative experience, right? Once you've identified what types of experiments you're running, now you know what, um, no, sorry, that you're running evaluative experiments, then you know what types of experiments you can run. Thanks, okay. Healing. Okay, about so we've time. got like 15 minutes. So I'm gonna power through the next section and we're gonna cut out one activity so, um, so that we can sort of wrap up. So we're gonna then, so now that you've had essentially 
ideally like understanding what types of tests to be able to run. We're gonna take a look at actually how to document them so that you can actually discuss it as a team. Because ultimately every test requires you to go fast, but you also need to revisit the results. So the principles of experimentation are the, these four, right? Every experiment that you run, you should have a core hypothesis. If you don't have a core hypothesis, you're not gonna know what you're testing for. So you need to know what answers you wanna look for. So go back to those four categories of questions, right? Identify which category of question is most appropriate for what you're testing for. And then think about the actual test that you're going to use to answer that question or that hypothesis. The second principle is you have to iterate. Uh, you can't, you, you, there's no way to say like, this is it, the end, like from the get go. So at first it can seem really arbitrary because you said, well, what's a good conversion rate or what's a good number of people to sign up, right? And maybe you might set it up such as like, oh, by day five, we expect to have 500 signups. But in day one, you have already 300 signups, right? So that's saying that maybe your initial experiment target was too low. So you, then you have to do that iteration and calibration. You have to adjust and it's okay to adjust mid experiment. Right, as long as you're making it rigorous so that you're, you're pretty certain that you're validating your hypothesis. Uh, the third is identifying the go and no go decisions up front. So if you know that 500 signups is what it takes for you to set, suddenly add on this product feature, that's your go decision. And again, if you, if you set that number and you want to iterate before the end of the experiment, that's totally fine, but you need to have like a go and a no-go threshold. So you basically saying, what does success look like? Okay. And the last piece, which we're going to cover right now in this session is documenting your assumptions. Not everyone on your team is going to have the similar assumptions about the test. They might have different understandings about the customer, the time it takes the test, the time it takes for the test, the KPI. So having it all kind of listed out and aligned will help you get that test up and running. Okay, next slide. Okay, so essentially very simple, but mighty tool here is the test card. How many of you have seen this? Um, it, just go ahead and put up an emoji, uh, like hand raised if you have seen these test cards before. I don't, am I, do I see anybody's hands raised? Okay, I don't see anybody's hands raised. Um, so basically the test card is just a simple way to list out all the assumptions for your team. It's broken up into four parts and you should be thinking about this for every experiment. The first is we believe, what is the hypothesis? That is the, that's the first section. So you need to list out that hypothesis, which we did in the previous exercise, right? We believe that um, customers will express enough interest in our financial literacy services, uh, da, 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 because they don't have a better alternative on the market. Uh, to verify that is sort of the description of the experiment. So that's the thick door test, the high bar test, whatever you want to do. Obviously, they're not calling it that in this example right here. They're just saying, we're going to create an example sales deck, right? Um, and so it doesn't have to be, we're going to create a high bar test. Just describe the experiment in very simple terms. And measure is the metric. Measure is what you're trying to look at to understand your hypothesis. So in this case, if you're looking at pre-sales, the goal would be probably signups, right? So signups for, or payments, right? A certain target for payments. Like you want to have a thousand pay, a thousand dollars worth of pre-sales uh, as part of this experiment. And that's going to be your go, no go, essentially. And then the last is we are right if that's the KPI. So we should be able to get a thousand of these dollars in pre-sales within the first week or five weeks, whatever that, that kind of KPI is, is, is going to help you determine whether or not you move forward with the experiment and then ultimately the product uh, refinement. Okay, so let's go and um, to the next slide. We're going to skip the Uber copter. Uh, if you heard of us, Uber, <laughs> Uber set up a copter service and we wanted to run this type of experience. Um, but we're going to do a final breakout, um, which is which is your your turn? You're you're now just scrolling. You think okay? So set up a test card for one test you'd like to run and share that with your team for feedback. So I think everyone here has already done the we believe that, and second is you've also done to verify that we're going to do the fake door test or whatever experiment is. So the last two boxes is how are you going to measure that and how are you going to know if you're right. So take eight minutes to do that in your breakouts, and we'll be back at two or eight oh. 
or 8.28, and then we'll wrap up in the last two minutes. Yeah, to reach out to me, um, or Eling and I can come up with a creative way to maybe do a video walk through for any of these documents if, if it's easier that way. Okay, I know we're a little over and I know it's late, but uh, thank you again for everyone uh, jumping on this workshop. And I hope it was helpful in the sense that you were able to achieve a few different uh, understandings of a few different um, experimental methods. Um, you know how to kind of capture that into a test card to document your assumptions with your team and that hopefully will give you direction for the experiment. And then these remaining resources should kind of give you a sense of how startups are also thinking about um, running their experiments as well too, uh, and, and what you can learn from that. So, okay, Yiling, hand it over to you. Thank you, Derek. And to everyone, um, do you have any questions for Derek while he's still here, before yes. he heads out to the streets of Paris? <laughs> any okay. any question at all yeah okay well if not um well if there is his contact is on the screen but if not can i just get everyone to thank derek so much for spending time with us his precious time uh and for really taking us through all this experimentation method or market validation method so i hope that you found this actually useful um yeah it would be great if you could all just like just thank you, Mr. Derek. <laughs> I think he's been called Mr. Derek for a long time now. Yeah, it's been a while. Did you even call Mr. Derek when you were a teacher? Uh, no, it was actually Mr. Fam. Yeah, so oh, Mr. Alex Fam. got okay. it. Thank you. <laughs> but it doesn't have to be. It's it's just Derek for this group. You guys um have come like extraordinarily uh like have done. Uh, I've seen a lot of the pitch decks and I'm very impressed. So. Really good, uh, best of luck on your journey uh, with this program and absolutely feel free to reach out if you have any, any, any questions. I'm here to help as much as uh, you need or want. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Derek. Okay, to everyone, um, just a couple of reminders, logistics stuff. I'm gonna paste a link here with Ment at Menti. We do want to ask you guys, what else do you want to see uh, from us in the next couple of weeks leading up to your demo day, right? So for example, do you want us to organize more like fireside chat with founders? Do you want any like virtual office tour? Do you want a career talk, you know, about entrepreneurship, whether it's like you should do it or you should not do it? Uh, do you want any, ask me anything sec ask me anything sessions. So for example, if you've all met your two mentors and if any of you want additional mentorship, we actually do have, um, some of these mentors do have additional hours available. So if you are looking for, you know, you want extra and you want to speak to like a different mentor, you can let us know as well. So in here, Menti, can you guys all go in and kind of just like type if there's more stuff that you want? Uh, and if there's less stuff that you want as well, like an awkward eight minute, networking session, you can tell us that too. Or if you have ideas around what else you want to do like as a group, also let us know. Okay, so again, let me know so that we can make sure that the next couple of weeks is something that's like fruitful and meaningful for you. Uh, if not, I, I think all of you already have a calendar in white, right? So next week, we will have another workshop at the same time on unique value proposition. So how to come up with your one liner that you can then use actually for your landing page itself. So if you're doing a big door test on your landing page, right? What is upstart? That one liner itself, we will go through that next week. And then uh, just as a reminder, the three upcoming workshops that we have, one next week on unique value proposition, we'll have two in November. One will be on fundraising as a social enterprise. So you know, you're all like impact based, right? So how, do, where can you get funds from? Where can you get sponsorships from? We'll have someone come talk about that. And then we'll have another session on storytelling and pitching. So from a lady who runs a PR company and does a lot of storytelling and pitching coaching, yeah, she'll be coming and doing that for you guys. Okay, so with that, thank you all. Please give us feedback on what you want to see. Okay. Um, 
especially for the female founders in the room as well, we are planning to host one specifically for female founders too. So I would also love to know if, what would you be interested in? Would you be interested in like career options or would you want to hear from other young female founders? Things like that, okay? Thank you all. Have a good Thank night. Everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Good night. Thank you.